Unlike typical visitors from the outer regions of our own solar system, Atlas came from far beyond, from interstellar space. It originated in another star system, carrying the chemical fingerprints of a world completely alien to ours. As it entered our solar system, Thori Idrihau Nepoin. Alice passed near Mars, leaving behind a faint trail of dust and molecules. By mid-November 2025, it approached Venus, the second planet from the Sun, a world of thick yellow clouds, crushing pressure and searing heat. At that time, Japan's Akatsuki orbiter was conducting its regular atmospheric observations around Venus. But when the comet passed nearby, Akatsuki's sensors detected something unexpected. Traces of hydrogen cyanide, carbon monoxide, and nickel appearing in the planet's upper atmosphere. These were substances that could not have formed naturally within Venus's extreme and closed environment. Their origin pointed clearly to an external source, the passing comet. Steady, descriptive. Venus is one of the most inhospitable places in the solar system. Its surface temperature reaches nearly 460 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. Its atmosphere is composed mostly of carbon dioxide, thickened by layers of sulfuric acid clouds, and its surface pressure is more than 90 times that of Earth, equivalent to being almost a kilometer underwater. Any spacecraft that lands there survives only a few hours before it melts or collapses. Under the pressure, yet, despite these hellish conditions, the comet's foreign materials managed to survive as they entered Venus's atmosphere. Organic and metallic compounds from 3I Atlas mixed into the upper layers of the planet's clouds. And remarkably, they did not instantly break apart. That was the beginning of a new story, not of life, but of chemistry in the upper atmosphere of Venus, where temperatures are relatively milder, between 30 and 60 degrees Celsius. Scientists observed something fascinating. Certain molecules that came from the comet began to interact and react with the planet's native gases. Hydrogen cyanide, nickel and carbon monoxide, all introduced by 3I Atlas, started forming complex chemical compounds. This process resembled what scientists on Earth call prebiotic chemistry. The type of chemical reactions that may have led to the origin of life on our own planet billions of years ago. Within these acidic droplets high above Venus, a microchemical laboratory had come into existence. Every droplet became a miniature reaction chamber, continuously mixing breaking and reforming molecules, factual. Explanatory hydrogen cyanide is a toxic compound, but when it reacts with water and certain metals such as nickel, it can produce amino acid precursors, the essential building blocks of life. Nickel, likely originating from the comet's metallic core, played the role of a catalyst, accelerating the reactions without being consumed itself. This catalytic effect is crucial in prebiotic environments, where random reactions rarely progress without assistance. These reactions were taking place in a region of Venus's clouds where pressure is similar to Earth's surface and the temperature is low, enough for liquid droplets to exist. In theory, that makes this zone one of the few places on Venus where chemistry could remain stable long enough to evolve into something more complex. While this doesn't imply the existence of life, it suggests that the conditions for chemical evolution might occasionally arise even in extreme environments. Calm, investigative, shortly after the comet's passage, Akatsuki's instruments detected increased electrical activity in the upper atmosphere. Flashes of lightning more frequent and more intense than usual. These electric discharges are significant. On Earth, Lightning is thought to have played an important role in early chemical evolution, supplying energy that allowed simple molecules to combine into more complex organic compounds. On Venus, the same process may have occurred on a small scale. 
The high-voltage lightning broke down hydrogen cyanide and carbon compounds, rearranging them into new structures. The planet's clouds effectively became an experimental zone where energy, matter, and chemistry converged. Scientists could not yet determine the exact outcome of these reactions, but the data raised a profound question. Was Venus, even briefly, revisiting a stage similar to the chemical dawn of life, or was it merely a transient chemical disturbance, balanced, reflective? Interestingly, 3I Atlas had also passed close to Mars earlier in its journey. There, the comet's materials were trapped in frozen dust and rock, preserved by Mars's cold and thin atmosphere. Mars stored the chemical ingredients quietly, in stasis, like a sealed record of the comet's passage. Venus, however, responded differently. Instead of preserving, it transformed. The same molecules that Mars locked away, Venus dissolved into its sulfuric acid clouds, sparking chemical reactions that changed the planet's atmospheric composition. In a sense, both planets became laboratories. Mars, a museum of preservation, and Venus, a forge of transformation. Precise, informative. Most scientists agree that the possibility of life on Venus remains extremely low. The planet's surface and atmosphere are overwhelmingly hostile to biological systems. However, the chemistry initiated by 3I, Atlas's materials provided an unprecedented opportunity to study how external factors can alter planetary atmospheres. It demonstrated that interstellar visitors can deliver complex chemistry to planets, even to those previously thought to be closed systems. Each comet, asteroid or interstellar object potentially, carries the seeds of new molecular pathways. This discovery also strengthened the hypothesis that chemical exchange between worlds sometimes called panspermia, could play a role in spreading the ingredients of life across the cosmos, even if no living organisms emerge from such exchanges. The processes themselves are vital for understanding how planets evolve chemically over time. Steady, scientific. Today, the Akatsuki orbiter continues to orbit Venus, sending back detailed data about the planet's dynamic atmosphere. Its instruments monitor changes in cloud composition, lightning frequency, and thermal activity. Space agencies including NASA, ESA, and ISRO have expressed renewed interest in Venus following these findings. New mission proposals involve sending aerial probes or aerobots capable of floating within the upper clouds, equipped with instruments to directly sample and analyze chemical reactions in real time. These missions aim to answer key questions. How long did the comet's materials persist in the atmosphere? Did they alter the planet's chemistry in measurable ways? And could similar events in the past have influenced Venus's mysterious evolution? The answers could reshape our understanding not only of Venus, but of how planetary chemistry adapts to external influences across the solar system. Calm, reflective. Events like the encounter with 3I Atlas remind us that even seemingly lifeless worlds are not entirely static. Underneath their extreme conditions, they continue to change molecule by molecule, reaction by reaction. Venus remains a hostile world, covered in acid clouds and subjected to crushing pressure. Yet, within those same clouds, complex interactions are taking place. Interactions that mirror, in some distant way, the early chemistry of life. Every planet, regardless of its appearance, carries the potential for chemical evolution. It may not lead to life, but it reflects the universe's inherent tendency toward complexity. Voice, closing narration, neutral but firm. The passage of Comet 3i Atlas changed Venus's atmosphere in subtle but measurable ways. It proved that even a brief interstellar encounter can inject new elements and compounds into a planet's system and trigger reactions that would otherwise never occur. Space is not an empty void. 
It is a medium filled with travelers, comets, asteroids, and interstellar objects, each carrying traces of the stars and systems they came from. Every encounter, every collision, every close approach contributes to the ongoing chemical dialogue between worlds. Two, once viewed as a static, lifeless inferno, now stands as an example of dynamic planetary chemistry. It may not host life, but it demonstrates how life's chemical precursors can emerge. Even in the most unexpected environments, the story of 3i Atlas and Venus is not about biology. It is about potential. It shows that across the universe, the exchange of matter continues endlessly, connecting worlds through chemistry, physics, and time.